Coming up in this video, former professional cricketer Ben Scott gives some strength and conditioning home exercises which batters of all levels can use to improve their bat access and posture. Let's go. Okay, we're going to talk about um, some batting drills that I think are going to help you guys from a, a strength and conditioning perspective. One of the biggest problems that we see with batters is actually falling over and not having access to the ball. All right, as a coaching point, we say access to the ball. Now, it's quite, it's quite obvious. If we, if we get into this position here where our feet is open and we can see the line of the ball, then we have access to the ball. But this is quite a, a common problem we see is that the knee will pop itself in, okay? And then to compensate there, what we end up doing is over time, we find that our foot starts to close off and we start to lean over in this position. Now the ball's coming from here, our weight is going there. All right, now that's quite a common problem, but where does it come from, all right? If we get into this position here and the knee starts to go, what part of the body is actually not holding that knee in position? It's our bum, all right, it's our glutes. In particular, it's our glute med. And what that is doing is that weakness that we have there is allowing the knee to internally rotate. It's called knee valgus. And then from this position, every, this, it's kind of like a cascading effect. Everything starts to shift. Our body starts to go over. We start to play around it and we get LB again, like I did a million times in my career. So what we're looking to do is we need to get ourselves into this position. And we need to get our glutes nice and strong. And I'm gonna go through some exercises now that are gonna help you to do that. Right, so we've, we've, we've just identified that this knee valgus, the knee's internally rotating. So what exercises can we do? The first thing is to make sure that this part of the body is activated, all right? And what I mean by activated is it's basically, it's woken up. We can quite often walk and go through our daily lives without that muscle really being used. We use our leg, we use our quads, we use our hamstrings, we use our lower back, all right? But that particular muscle there is really important. So if we can get that to work, then the whole of the system starts to work as one unit, all right? And it's far more favorable. So the first exercise I'm gonna show you is a clam. So it's like something out of a Jane Fonda um, exercise video. All we're gonna do is get ourselves on our side like this. Put your hand or put your thumb into your hip. The reason you do that is so that it stays in position. And then from there, we're looking to open up the leg like that. Now, if you take your thumb and put it um, into where your pocket would be, your back pocket would be on a pair of jeans. So if you push in there, as you lift your leg up into the air, you should feel that part of your bum activate. All right, so as we go through there, if it is activating straight away, brilliant. If it's not, what I want you to do is keep going, keep going, keep going until you feel a little bit of a dull ache through there. By the time you get that dull ache here, that part of the muscle has started to activate. Now, some people will feel that through their adductors, some people will feel it in all sorts of places across the body. If you do, it means that you are struggling to activate that particular muscle, all right? And that means that this exercise is a must for you. Okay, we've gone through uh, an exercise that is going to activate this glute med, but what I want to talk about now is how we can actually strengthen the glute med, which is gonna help us hold that position for slightly longer. So this is called a distraction drill, and I'm gonna use a band that's going to effectively um, pull my body this way. So I'm gonna pull myself into that bad position, into that bad posture, and the purpose of exercise is that we will adapt to the exercise, which will then correlate into when we're playing the shots and when we're actually out on the field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into this lunge as if I'm, as if I'm batting. I'm gonna use the band now to distract myself, so I'm gonna try and pull it away, which obviously if I let that, if I let that go, it's gonna pull me into that bad position. But now I'm exercising whilst I'm fighting that position here. So this muscle here, this glute med that I keep talking about, has to work in conjunction with everything else whilst I'm into the, in this lunge position. All right, so now if I go into these lunges here, I'm gonna feel that that is almost twice as hard now because I can feel that that muscle is working as well as all of this, all right? If I now ditch the uh, band and I get into that lunge here, I'm gonna find that actually it's much easier to keep my knee in the right shape and have access to the ball. The next one I want to talk about is, is a bit of a general subject around posture, but this will particularly, I mean, it, it, it kind of crosses all, all disciplines within cricket, um, but particularly with batsmen. And I want to talk about upper body posture. 
Now, what happens, how does our posture um, degenerate? How, does it, how do we get into bad posture? Quite often, you know, we're, we're on laptops, we're eating in these positions, we're just sitting in a, it's, it's what's known as a kyphotic position, so our shoulders are rounded forwards. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can identify with this. So the shoulders sit forwards um, and, and we're gonna find it difficult to get ourselves into good shapes. So if I correlate that to batting, so we're in here, yes, our shoulders do roll forwards when we bat, generally speaking. But quite often when we make the shape that we need to make, we need to open up our chest, get our shoulders back so that we actually can either access the ball or get our, get our head into a good position to hit. All right, so it is quite important that we give our body the opportunity to be able to do that. Now, certainly we see this later on in life as the world comes on us and gravity pulls us forwards and we find that people kind of lose that shape and their, their shoulders hunch and they find it, find it quite difficult. So quite simply, what we need to do is we need to release the muscles at the front and we need to strengthen the muscles at the back. And hopefully that's gonna to start to bring that skeleton back into alignment, which is gonna help us with our technique. It's gonna allow us to get into these shapes um, to hit the ball and also bowl and get into good shapes to actually be up and see the ball. Fundamentally, we want to be pulling to strengthen. So any kind of exercise you do either in the gym or at home, any kind of pulling exercise that's working our back is gonna be strengthening and activating through our back and exercises that release our chest. So either a, stre a stretch against the wall here, that's gonna just, I mean, that's quite a nice stretch anyway, but something along those lines or just opening up the chest through here. And if we use those in conjunction, we're gonna be releasing the chest, activating the back. Now, hopefully over time, that's gonna bring us into good positions. There's 168 hours in a week. If you do this three times uh, a week tw for 20 minutes, that's not gonna make too much of a difference. This is the kind of thing that we need to be doing on a daily basis. So when you wake up in the morning, open up that chest, maybe grab a band or grab some weights or whatever you can to do some rowing and get your back to activate and you'll notice that over a period of time that will make a world of difference. Be sure to visit the training websites run by Ben, links in the description below. Also, tap or click the end screen to see the wicketkeeping masterclass given by Ben and I cannot wait to see you over there.